Hello and welcome to Civilization Beyond Earth with the expansion Rising Tide. I am Chris Cavalier. This is going to be a tutorial aimed at players that are new to Civilization Beyond Earth and Rising Tide. If you are familiar with Civilization V, you will notice some similarities in between the two games. However, this game, uh, you know, my tutorial will take into account that you do know a little bit, so you can kind of pick up on what I'm saying, and I will re reference Civilization V just as a point, you know, that you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. Like, energy in Civilization Beyond Earth is equivalent to gold in Civilization V. So things like that, you know, can help you bridge the gap in what's going on. So here are the starting civilizations that you can play. They each have a little different thing about them. Afala is going to specialize in converting production in town into, say, growth, or into, say, science. You know, things of that nature, or energy, or what's the other one? There's one more. Anyways, they're a little bit better at doing that. So if, if you, it's probably more of an advanced players type of faction that you'd want to use, or your sponsor, I should say. So Afala um, can be nice. Ark is going to have some faster covert operations, and they're going to take less intrigue to attempt different operations. The Pan-Asian Cooperative is, you know, basically they're kind of like Egypt where they specialize in wonders in the Civilization V. The North Sea Alliance has stronger aquatic cities, so you basically want to have all your cities be aquatic. You could pick up a big, a big advantage with that. Franco-Iberia, of course, is going to be just like the French in Civilization V, where their culture is kind of their strong point. And you earn culture, and it will give you virtues, is what they call them in Civbert, which is what we're playing. The Slavic Federation is going to start off with some, with some resources, with some strate strategic resources. Chung Su is basically really focused on covert operations, and they end up getting some science from it. They are also a aquatic-based civilization. Polystralia is really good at trade routes. They get a lot of trade routes, a lot of trade routes, which is good probably in the lower difficulty games once you get up into, say, Apollo. Um, the trade routes become a little bit iffy just because they count towards your unit count, and I don't know, at Apollo you kind of need a lot of military. So I don't like Polystralia so much in, say, Apollo level of play. Cavathon Protectorate, it's basically going to be like India. They have some reduced costs for purchasing city plots. Let's see here. Integer is actually one of my favorites. They can uh, have a reduced purchasing cost for buildings and units with diplomatic capital. So you can actually purchase units and buildings with diplomatic capital or energy. So they're both earned a little bit different way, so that I, know, I really like them. Brasilia basically is very war-oriented, where they gain some bonus diplomatic capital for every unit killed in combat, and they have an increased war score, which basically will mean if they're going to negotiate peace, 30% more points, um, they're going to be able to ask for additional things, basically. And you know, and it might be on average, I don't know, it could be on average like 100, 300 energy or so. So that, that could be good. And then the African Union is really focused on growth, growing on their cities rather tall, or just growing their cities faster. So that's kind of the different breakdown of the civilization. So we're just going to go ahead and go with one of them and see how it goes. Let's go ahead and just play as Ark. So you can choose what your colonists basically specialize in. So say, are you a colony of scientists, refugees, aristocrats, engineers, or artists? So they all have their places, you know, they're, they're useful in different aspects. And it also depends on the kind of the strategy you want to use for the game. My, however, my favorite is engineers. Plus two production in every city. I mean, to me, that it helps you build up all these other things quickly. And that is probably one of the keys to winning the game. So I like to go with engineers. So we can choose a spacecraft. And it's kind of a goofy option, but... You can do the Continental Surveyor, which is going to show you all the coastlines on the map, which is actually pretty impressive. The Retrograde Thrusters is pretty good, where it allows you to have a wider area to choose from where, when you're landing, when you make planet fall. 
Tectonic scanner is going to allow you to see some strategic resources without having the technology to do so. The fusion reactor just gives you some bonus energy, which of course is money. And then the life form sensor is going to let you see where the alien nests are on the map, you know, which does have, have its uses, especially if you want to go with lots of explorers or if you really want to go after and attack the aliens. I think we're going to go with the reveal coast on the map. I think that is the best option out of all of them. It gives you a lot of information early on in the game. Your cargo. So you can start out with an extra population. So you can start out at two population. You're going to be working two tiles immediately, which can be nice. You can start off with the Pioneer technology, which is, you know, which is pretty impressive. I think that's actually one of the best options out of these. Raw materials will allow you to have a clinic in your first city immediately. That's not very impressive to me. Uh, a soldier unit could be useful, especially if you really want to get into combat right away, but that's not my best option, I don't think. Or you could begin with a worker unit. You know, I actually like the worker unit to start off with. I think getting your tiles set up and moving as fast as possible, it's kind of like healing in, say, a combat type of game. You want to keep your healing up before you get too far down. When, you know, once you get behind, it's, it seems like you're just kind of always you know, just staying behind all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with a worker unit, although I think pioneering is probably, it might be slightly better. I just like going out with the worker and, and getting tiles set up right away. So we can go ahead and set up a world. Of course, you can go into the custom world and you can set it up to fit your play style, especially with the biomes. You could say go with lush. There's going to be lots of wildlife, lots of aliens, but they're going to be relatively mild in their aggressiveness. Um, fungal. I think there's going to be lots of miasma, which if you end a tile on miasma, you're going to end up taking 10 damage. Arid. There's going to be very few nests, but they are pretty formidable, formidable in combat. The primordial is going to be lots of uh, aliens, and they're going to be rather aggressive. And then frigid is going to be they're going to be rare and they're going to stay close to their nests. So you're able to kind of roam around a little bit easier. So what we could do is we could either do a random or we could do just, you know, maybe we'll just do lush so the aliens aren't that tough and but there's lots of them so we can see lots of different things. And the planet type, let's go with Terran which is basically going to be a few large land masses separated by oceans and some smaller islands. I like that. Alright, we are making Planet Fall. So normally you get a you get more hexes to choose from than this, but we have an a tile that we cannot land on. If we work it we'll get two production out of it. So basically we need to figure out what looks the best with this particular setup. So this one we could work the basalt sooner but from here we can actually reach the algae which is a pretty good food tile let's see if we go here we'll end up getting both of them if we go here we can still get both of those and we may get something else that we currently can't see you know let's see from here let's see what, do we, what would we be missing out on It'd be these tiles down here which look uninteresting you know this one has some tiles that may potentially be out here so I'm almost thinking that if we go back here, I think that opens up some possibilities. And it would make us a little bit tougher to attack with C. With an aquatic warfare. Wow. And we're on a very small island, so I, I don't know how big a deal that is anyways. No, we're not. We're not. We're on a sizable continent. We're just kind of out on a... I don't even want to call that an an archipelago or whatever something like that right okay so we've made planet fall so you can see here we have an explorer we have a worker we have our city which has a population of one it will take eleven turns for us to reach a population of two under the current conditions that we're working with which is probably not ideal we don't have anything in our production currently so what we need to do is we need to start making some decisions. So when you initially start the game, you would just finish the habitation technology. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Let's go ahead and check out our production first. 
So you can see here we have five units that we can build, which includes the worker, explorer, soldier, gunboat, and patrol boat. And you will often hear me refer to the different boats and the different soldiers as the melee unit or the ranged unit because their names will change as you progress throughout the game so sometimes you're saying hey my gunboat but your gunboat is now I don't know a vindicator and your patrol boat is now a tenant or something you know so it changes quite a bit so anyways you kinda get the idea what I mean I think and then we have two buildings that we can create the clinic and the old earth relic and then there's also what they call developments now when, you, when I talked about Awful Law as one of the factions, they actually have an increased bonus for converting production into, what's this, industrial will convert to energy, research converts to science, social converts production to culture, and agriculture converts production to food. So you can see right now it's going to take 11 turns for us to reach population 2. If I do agricultural development, it's only going to take 6 turns, which is pretty powerful. You can get to level two and start working two tiles in only six turns. So I think that is pretty interesting that you can do that. You can see here for social development, right now we're earning one culture per turn. You do that, we're earning three. Interesting. Research, right now we're doing three science. We can change that, we'd be doing five. And if we do energy, right now we're making three. We can boost it up to five. So sometimes doing these developments granted you are not being, making buildings you're not creating units but you are going after a particular goal that's related to culture food growth or population or energy you know one of those things so off a lot typically in the end game you start using these for say building your research and getting technology faster it's something that it's, it's a way that you can play I'm not saying it's better or not but it's something you can do, and you know, it's the same thing in Civilization V, where you can just focus on production of a particular thing like that, particular, I don't know, like science, gold, food, that type of thing. So anyways, that's, that explains that, because sometimes I know you look at Awful Law and you're thinking, oh, city development, what the heck is that? Well, that's what that means. Okay, I guess we can move on from that. So what we are going to do, and I'll explain something else before we get into more detail, but what we are going to do, so in the city screen right now you can see that we are working this tile so we're gonna get two food one production and this tile happens to be eggs so those are eggs down there so what we want to do is probably develop this tile more or improve it is what you could say so we're gonna take our worker and end up moving them over to the eggs and into the water So the other thing that you can do is you can actually micromanage them. Micromanaging these type of games is somewhat helpful. So right now you can see that is selected with this green icon over it. You can actually click it or unclick it. If you click it, you unclick it. If you click it, you unselect it. And so right now we have an unemployed citizen. And our unemployed citizen is all they do is they produce, I believe, one production. I don't know if it will, will specifically tell me, but that's what they do. So anyways, if I click it again, I am now locking in this tile. So if you just have it where it's, if you do that, they're probably just going to go to select that. But we can lock it in. I guess if we hit reset, then it would just say default to that. But if we lock it in, it's going to work that tile no matter what. Unless an alien or an enemy has moved over that tile, then it will go back to a default for whatever is the best tile available. Anyways, that, that is something that's always uh, noteworthy, I think. So the other thing I wanted to mention inside the city management screen is it says here it's going to take 22 turns until we have border growth. So border growth is going to be how you expand your city. So right now you can see we have our seven tiles for our city. And you see this one outlined in purple to the right. So right now in 22 turns we will end up acquiring this tile just from our border growth. Our culture expands, people are moving to the suburbs, whatever. Why they're living out in the water with the eggs, I have no idea, but maybe they like caviar, I don't know. So anyways, that's what's going to happen. In 22 turns, we are going to end up picking up this tile and be able to work it. And it is a good tile. Two food, one production. I'll take that for every single tile in the game. I mean, that'll, that'll grow your city and you'll be working fine and then you can, you know, 
improve them and have them do whatever you want. So, to improve this border growth, if we pick up the old earth relic, we will gain plus two culture per turn and plus two capital per turn. So the capital to me right now is not that important. If you play Civilization V, this would be the same as, say, doing the, the monument would give you some culture. So anyways, old earth relic, it's the first thing I do. Oh, so now if I look here, so it says 22 turns until border growth. Once this is made, there's going to be a giant jump in that border growth. And we'll take a look at that when, say, this building is done. So what did I say, 22 turns? We're on turn 0, so turn 22, we should gain this tile. But we're going to get it way sooner than that. So now, our worker, if we hit the M button here, we can see what our range is. So we can move two tiles in all these different directions. However, it doesn't pay to send your worker off into the unknown here. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and move right into the eggs. Back whence we came from the egg. Now we just want to jump in the water and we're going to work that tile next turn. So our explorer, since we have revealed all the coastlines, you can see up here we have this continent here. We have a continent here. Looks like we have a continent there you know, like an island there. So we're on the largest continent on the map. So what revealing these coastlines did for us is we can see different resources here. You know, if we look around, there's some kind of funky alien thing, ancient alien remains. There we got some xenomass, which is good for your harmony. Floatstone is good if you're going to go purity. There's some ferraxite. So you may be asking yourself, what are you talking about? Xenomass, Floatstone, and Phyraxite. In the game, you are going to gain, what do I want to call them? Affinities. You're going to gain experience in affinities. And there's Harmony, there's Purity, and there's Supremacy. And we're going to learn, you're going to see a lot about this. So this is a, kind of a general concept that you need to know. Harmony, Purity, and Supremacy. So if you actually want to get into great depth into detail about them. You can go into your Civilopedia. Affinity is right at the top. You could say, look at this. Summary, an affinity, a guiding philosophy towards the evolution of humanity, may be developed by the player during the course of the game to distinguish the character of their colony. There are three affinities, harmony, supremacy, and purity. And each of those affinities has a specific win condition that you can do. There's five win conditions, or at least I believe that's correct. Let's go down to victories. It's always good to know how do you win the game when you're going to play it. So yeah, there's the domination, contact, emancipation, promised land, and transcendence. So I believe the promised land is purity, emancipation is supremacy, and transcendence is harmony. The contact is going to be a generic win condition and then the domination of of course is going to be like civilization 5 you take over everybody's capital you win so anyways that's how that works you know you can actually go here and get great detail about how they work until you've actually seen them actually done sometimes it you're not really sure what's going to happen i've gone through and, and beat the game on the different victories and it's like i'm not really sure how this mechanic works and before you go say go playing like a multiplayer game you kind of want to know how it works so it's not like this big surprise and you're like where are all these guys coming from what what are colonists doing showing up you know the people from earth so anyways use your civilopedia go in here and read victory conditions about how you want to win the game or just you know so you can kind of know what's going on and don't read it all at once just read it you know like hey how do i win the game well go down to victory you know, look at the different victory conditions, and you can kind of figure it out. Okay, I got off on a huge tangent there. Anyways, we got Phyraxite, Xenomass, and Floatstone. So Phyraxite is basically going to be the resource that units in the Supremacy Tech Trees are going to power. So if you want to build a... If you're going to go up, say, Supremacy, you want Phyraxite. It's just simply something that you want. If you're going to go Harmony, you want Xenomass, which you can see here. And if you're going to go Purity, you're going to want to get Floatstone. And if you don't, if you're not going up any of those affinities, those resources don't mean quite as much to you. Maybe to block somebody else, maybe, but generally they, they don't have a whole lot of usefulness. Okay, so we got that concept 
out of the way. So if we look at the screen here, of course, this is going to be your technology that you're currently researching, which right now we just finished it since we just started on turn zero. Here is going to be our di diplomatic capital, and so it is something that you earn. You can use it to purchase units. You can use it to purchase buildings. You can use it to broker deals with other civilizations. It's a very important concept. So here we're going to have our resources and some more resources will show up which they call the strategic resources they are currently not showing up the culture so this basically works exactly like civilization 5 once you reach 30 culture you're going to get a new virtue and then the virtues are basically going to give you bonuses to your civilization and you there's going to be different trees and we'll take a look at that when we get to it here's health health is going to be the equivalent of happiness in civilization 5 so 5 health is five happiness so right now we're happy here is our energy energy is the equivalent of gold and again they, they kind of match the colors a little bit I guess maybe not anyways energy is gold so plus three energy per turn you know we're, we're making positive and then we have our science which is gonna be just like civilization five you know so you have your science here and that's gonna be a very important concept as we need that to build up our text and then our text so we'll unlock various things it's very important for our win condition, unless of course we're going for domination, but then you still want it to unlock, you know, cool units, you know, later on in the game. So we're at turn zero. Here's all this information as all this is saying is, hey, there's a resource pod. Watch, let's see if I can find one. Geez, usually they're all over the place. So there's a resource pod, which is going to be your ruins from Civilization Five. They'll give you all kinds of stuff. Typically, they give you energy or science. That's pretty much what they mostly give you. You can get artifacts from them, which we'll see. But those are going to be very important, especially early on in the game. So anyways, that's what all these messages are saying. Since we revealed all coastlines, as you can see, we've revealed a lot of, a lot of those resource pods. So let's go ahead and take a look at our research. So when you when I initially saw this, I thought this game is more complex than I want to figure out. It looks very confusing. Civilization 5, you typically have 3 to 4 in a tier in an era and then you just kind of it's kind of linear. You just move from left to right. So here you have your point of origin, which is your habitation technology, and then it just goes out like in this radiating circle. So you can see here it doesn't go on forever. So you know it's not quite as crazy as you may think. And then you will need to get the primary technology and then you can go down below and get what they call these leaflet technologies. So if I want to get ballistics, I want to get physics first. And if you go ahead and look at this, so if I went and picked up physics first, it would say it says here I would get seven affinity towards purity. So if you look up here it's, and kind of mouse over it says right now I have 0 out of 10 towards next level. So if I got 7 it would put me 3 away from first level. Now in these leaflet technologies which are going to be the technologies below the this primary one here you actually get 20 XP towards an affinity. So they're, they're all color coded so red is purity, yellow is going to be supremacy, this uh, light blue is going to be harmony and you can get Texts that give some of each. I don't even, there might even be one that might give all of them. Yep. Transgenics will give 7 XP towards every affinity. So that is something that is important to note. Okay, so your, your first technology. We want to figure out what, what are you going to do to start this game? What is going to give us our best advantage to get going? So some people think, hey, I want food. You know, this ultrasonic fence, if you build this, if you get this e ecology technology, you're going to end up getting a quest that allows it so your trade convoys cannot be attacked by aliens. It's great. It is a great quest to have. Do you need to do it on your first technology? No. This kind of, to me, you know, food is nice. Growing your cities up big is all right. But, like, Civ Civilization V, having a big, strong city... Is a little bit more important than it is here. Building, I guess, what you would want to call wide or having some breadth, having more cities, 
and not having them be you know huge is probably better than having a bunch of big cities and you know in civilization 5 it's probably a little bit different for the most part and it depends on your civilization too okay let's go ahead and take a look at all the other technologies so as you can see here the ones that aren't purple are ones that we can't select yet you know I could click on it and it would work towards it it would cue them but we're not gonna do that so genetics that would allow us to pick up the pharma lab which allows us uh, more happiness the cyto nursery I wonder if that's Kaido Nursery. Anyways, Saito Nursery would give us a bonus to science and health. Those are two buildings. Ecology has this vivarium, which is going to be food, and the ultrasonic fence that will allow our workers to clear miasma, which is very nice. Um, engineering would allow us to build a combat rover, which basically is going to be an armored vehicle that has some decent movement. I'd also build basically a gold mine type of thing, a thorium reactor and a repair facility would allow us to build land units faster and it also reveals titanium on the map physics this allows us to build the ranger which is basically going to be your archer your ranged combat unit and the observatory which for science and then your dry dock is going to be for aquatic cities will improve your production and then also your orbital coverage which we'll have to talk about in a minute but to me, the best choice overall to start the game, your first technology, and granted, pioneering is great. Pioneering is also the cheapest one to go after. It allows you to build colonists, which you're going to need colonists, and you're going to want to build build it to get trade convoys. I mean, this is one of the, I don't know, it should be in the top four technologies that you do to start the game. Chemistry, however, I think is the best. It allows you to build the submarine, which is not super important on turn one. However, the laboratory gives you plus two science. The recycler is the best building that you can get going on the first turn. That allows you a lot your first turn, but after you research your first tech, it's going to allow you to get plus two production, which, again, we did go with extra production in our setup, so that's something that's important. We also revealed petroleum, and then we can also build a petroleum well. Those aren't quite as important starting out, but this recycler, we want to work towards getting that, so we're going to do that. So there we go, we are set up. Let's go ahead, our unit needs orders. We need to send our explorer somewhere. It's kind of amazing that there's a resource pod way over there. What we may do is send you up on this hill. See if you see anything you don't. Right there we have an alien nest. What are these guys? Are these guys are the scarabs, yeah, the alien scarabs. So typically I like to keep some distance from the nest. It seems to anger the aliens a little bit. So, no resource pod nearby. So we're going to go ahead and hit next turn. A civilization makes landfall, planet fall. So they're way over there in the other continent. We don't have to worry about them for quite a while. So our worker here is in the water. So with the eggs you can build a bed. I should show you this real quick. So go into Civilopedia. So I looked at that tile last turn and it said that they're eggs. So if I type in eggs, it brings up, what do you know? Eggs. So if that is on a tile, it gives plus one food. It can be improved by a bed. It's not the only thing that can improve it, but if we do make a bed on eggs, it'll give us I can think of all kinds of jokes that it would give us, but it's going to give us plus one culture from the eggs. So we got our caviar, you know, we're socialites. It's going to give us culture. So the question is, let's look to see what we have for our other tiles. So we have two tiles that can only produce production because they're gaping crevasses, if you will. You know, we have out here we have some tiles that we could work to build up food. You know, the water you can build some farms in. Here we have some gold that will help our culture. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm thinking that we should do, at least initially, is to build a farm here and increase our food production to allow our city to grow faster. You know, the extra culture would be nice. Be nice. Be nice. It'd be nice, but I think we're going to go with a farm instead of a bed, although the bed would be faster to create. I want more... I want my, my town to grow faster, my city to grow. Okay, so now we need to bring you, I want to get some view over this direction. 
You know, I may just go over here and work that initially. It's kind of a weird start. Okay, so they are landing on the southern hemisphere, and they're not near us, so that's good. Let's see if you go there. Okay, I was hoping there was something there. Yeah, very weird. And I don't want to go running way over there, so what I might do is just go back, check things out this way. I'll go ahead and just hit next turn. Get things moving along. Keep on trucking, if you will. So you can hit the M key and have some advanced movement. You can also do, say, oh, I'm going to do two turns. And you want to avoid ha ending a turn on Miasma, which is going to be this reddish, not reddish, this greenish-blue mist. You will take 10 damage if you land on it. Your expedition is going to have 10 hit points. Not 10 hit points, 100 hit points. It will take 10 hit points damage if it ends its turn on Miasma. So that's something you generally want to avoid, or at least be aware of. I think that's maybe a, a better way to say it. Okay, so you will randomly get quests. You also get quest decisions where you have to make. So this is basically saying, hey, found an outpost. Research pioneering. Duh, we're going to do that. We will definitely be doing that. So we're just exploring. So you can move two turns, or not two turns, you can move two tiles at once, or you can move one tile at a time. I like to move one tile at a time because it reveals whatever's out there, and that way I don't walk into something. You can accidentally attack aliens in this game. It's one of my biggest pet peeves, but and it, maybe not so much on a, a, t a unit that can move only two tiles, but say, like, I don't know, some on some of the ships, I always end up attacking something I don't mean to. So that's something to be aware of, and also if you see a nest, if you have some aggression built up with the aliens, maybe you step forward one, and you see that there's a nest really close, or an alien, a group of aliens, that way you can take a step back. Here we got some Hydra Coral, which those are basically just structures that you can shoot, and it will make the aliens aggressive towards you, so it's some easy XP, if you will. But we're going to leave them alone. Our explorer is not too tough. Oh, and this guy. So this is either the Northern Sea Alliance or Chung Su. How close are they to us? That's pretty close. A little closer than I would like. And they're probably going to be very sea-based with their units, which really puts Central here at a disadvantage. And I'm glad we actually picked that tile, because that's really going to lessen the amount of aquatic, a lot, you know, the, the way that uh, naval units can attack us, so that was probably a good decision. Especially on a higher difficulty, that would have been a great decision. I'd look like a genius then. Maybe not so much now. Okay. So remember when we had our old Earth relic? And we had 22 turns until border growth. Well, it's only been 8 turns. So one, shouldn't that be like 14 turns still to border growth? So when we picked up that old Earth Relic, which we can actually look at all of our buildings here, you have to click on Show. We have our Headquarters, which is basically going to be your palace from Civilization 5, or any of the Civilization series, pretty much. And here you can see our old Earth Relic. We have plus two culture, plus two capital per turn. We could sell this building for 15 energy, which would be a huge waste, but at, if you're really crunched from, for energy, where you need to get some money to do something, you can sell buildings. You can also, say, take over a, somebody else's city and then sell their buildings, which lots of times if somebody takes over one of your cities and then all of a sudden you take it the next turn or a few turns, a few turns later, it's like just totally like all the buildings are gone. What do you think they did? Yeah, they went and sold all your buildings. They raised them to the ground. They made some cash off of you, so don't lose your city because... People can go in there and they can sell your stuff. You know, it's like, don't let people break into your house because, you know, they're going to take your stuff and they're going to sell it. So it's the same concept here. So anyways, we are picking up plus two culture per turn, which you can see that reduced our border growth by like ten turns. So that's pretty impressive. So in, in four turns, we're going to get this tile here that's highlighted in purple. Sometimes you may have multiple tiles that are highlighted in purple. 
and I think basically it's going to have an equal chance to get any of them. So if there's three tiles, it's a 33% chance to get you know any particular tile. Four, you know, it's going to be like a 25% chance for any particular tile. So, anyways, that is kind of how that works. So for our production. We can either build a clinic or we can build units. I think we're going to go with the clinic. We get some science. We get some health. Health isn't quite as important as a science at this point. But that's what we're going to do. So then the computer is taking their turns. We are going to have seven opponents on this map. I have to admit, that's actually one of the things I like better about Civilization V is that there are a lot of civilizations and it makes the game interesting. And they also have lots more options with that. So here we pick up our resource pod. Inside the resource pod we pick up 15 culture. And we pick up a quest. So if it says, hey, find two more resource pods, we'll give you some bonus reward. We don't know what that reward is at the moment. But it's, you know, better than nothing, right? Something is better than nothing. So we'll just keep on hopping along here. We didn't pick up an artifact. I'm a little sad about. But we'll get over it. We'll keep on trucking. Okay, so where do I want to go from here? I could go check out, head towards that and check that out. You know, I wonder how smart would it be to move towards them and try to beat them towards stuff. Probably not. Probably not a big factor where I'm at. See, I could go up on the hill, up on the miasma, which didn't sound that exciting. That looks like a crevice there. Yeah, no, I was wrong. It's a, a hill. It's a mountainous looking hill with a resource pod. Okay, so we have now picked up 31 culture out of 30, which means we get a virtue, which pops up down here. Let's go take a look at the virtues real quick. This works, uh, I don't know, it's actually pretty neat, actually. So there are four different virtues. There's going to be might, which is obviously going to be, you know, focuses on military. Prosperity is going to focus on growth and expansion. Knowledge is going to focus on science and culture. And then industry is going to focus on productivity and the economy. So, you basically are going to have four different things that you can select right away. So, for might, you get plus 50 XP from combat. From prosperity, you're going to take frugality, which is going to give you a plus 10 food retained after city's population grows. You know, that's actually pretty decent. Uh, foresight is going to give you plus 10 science when healthy. Health is, is happiness, as you remember. And if, say, you are playing in a pretty competitive game, and I don't know, a multiplayer, or you're playing at the Apollo level, or you just want to build fast and you know, kind of work up through that, Civilization Beyond Earth has a lot more ability to handle unhappiness or unhealthiness, whereas in Civ Five, especially the vanilla game, you start getting unhappy and things just go down the tubes fast. This game has a lot more resilience in that regard. So if you're playing a very competitive game, I don't suggest knowledge because you're not actually going to get this bonus because you're going to be unhealthy a majority of the time and your bonus to your science is not going to happen. So I'm not a big fan of the knowledge. Industry, however, is pretty useful no matter what you are doing. You know, growing your city you know, it is important, you know, getting free workers and free colonists and all that stuff is nice. But what I like to do is I like to focus on building my energy and then purchasing units. And it, I don't know, I think it works out pretty good. So what I'm going to do, since I'm not going to do any combat, say, in the first 40 turns probably, because the, the computer's not going to attack me or that, you know, this other civilizations aren't going to attack me. The aliens might if I, you know, if I, you know, get them mad, if I waken them from their slumber. But we're going to go with the labor logistics plus 10 production towards buildings. And that's just generic buildings. So if it takes 10 turns, it's going to take 9. And I think eventually that's going to add up because we're going to build a lot of buildings in this game. So let's go with that. And I'm not saying that this is the only choice that you can make or it's the best choice. It's just the choice that I like. And I will go into other virtue trees. And I just thought, I just forgot something I probably should have showed you when I was in there. We'll go check it out in a second. Okay, let's go check out this resource pod. So we pick up 40 energy. I like it. And nothing else. I was hoping for more stuff. I was being greedy. Okay, so our worker has finished the farm. And we are now working two tiles. We had some border growth. If you see this little green 
symbol down here, it means you get some, not border growth, you get some population growth. Pardon me. Okay, so look at this tile situation. This is bizarre. So, we're working a forest, which is worth one food, one production, which is not that great. Honestly. Let's see here, what kind of tile is that exactly? So it's a forest grassland. And in this game, I would recommend, especially if you're unfamiliar with it, to mouse over. Because sometimes it's hard telling what tiles are. And say if they have some uh, resource on it, sometimes they totally hide the forest. And you don't know there's a forest. And you go to move across it, like with the military unit, and all of a sudden you only move one tile, and you thought you could move two. You know, so it's kind of a good idea to check first. So I believe this is a hill over this way. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and start working this tile. Wait, one turn till border growth. I could move there and chill out. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to go here. I can hit my space bar or just do the do nothing. And so we're just going to chill out for a turn. Okay, so now let's go back and take a look at our virtues. Something I didn't mention, which is pretty cool and also very important. So you can see here there are arrows, well maybe not arrows, but there are lines connecting the virtues to virtues. So when I pick up labor logistics, you can obviously pick the, any of the next three in line here. And it's the same with all of them. The first one you're going to be able to go any direction. But let's say I go over here to what is this, uh, commoditization. From there, I'm not going to be able to go back to central planning, although you will from from back from labor logistics but from there you can go to standardized architecture or you can go to investment so sometimes planning out your route can be important and you don't need to pick up all five virtues in a tier to move on so you can go commoditization and then you can go investment then you can go alternative markets and then you can go social investment and so there you have five virtues and you're already into the third tier and obviously the third tier is probably going to have some pretty significant you know abilities in it. I don't know what's like a really good one over here. Yeah, plus 50% quantity from sources of strategic resources. That's a pretty good one for might. You know, plus 10% strength and range strength for all units. Uh what's some something interesting over here that's crazy. Oh yeah, each city generates 0.2 health for every building. I tell you, you do that at the end of the game and you get like 50 health. It's just crazy. So that that's something to take note of. So then the other thing to consider is if you take five five virtues in the industry, industry tree, you will end up getting the synergy bonus, which is plus 10 energy in every city. And you can see that right here. There's a little kind of bracket. If you get, you know, 10, then you're going to get this extra one, and eventually you're going to get, you know, a bunch of extra energy. And then you can also if you just have five virtues from any tree in the first tier, you're going to get some synergy bonus. So let's say if we just pick out five virtues in the first tier from any of these trees, we would get a free virtue. So that's pretty significant. You get a free technology if you have, I don't know how many that is, but if you have a bunch of these virtues from the first tier, you get a free technology. So that's something to consider when you're building is, you know, what do I want from each one? Do I want to get the synergy bonus or not? You know, it's, it's pretty important. So from there, I think uh, that pretty much will cover it for our first video. Again, this is meant to be a tutorial. I wanted to show some friends how the game works. And I'm probably going, you know, beating a dead horse, if you will, that this is going to give you a lot of information that may not be all that exciting to watch. If you'd like to see a Let's Play with Civilization Beyond Earth, Dark Dark Tide Rising. I don't know why I was called Dark Tide Rising. It's this Rising Tide. Um, please say so in the comments, and I may start one of those fairly soon. As I've been having a lot of fun with the game. Again, this is mainly a tutorial just to show people kind of how to get started, what's going on. I will try to do a little bit of everything. I'll play it for, I don't know, six to eight videos maybe, just so we can get an idea. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next video. It looks like in the next video, we're probably not going to really get into too much combat, but we will continue um, deciding which tree to go up and how to how to build our city and how to make it strong and how to, you know, kind of get rolling and get on the right path and, you know, 
win the game in 300 turns or so. How about that? Anyways, thanks for watching.